couple of things that uh, I want to remind you of. One uh, probably is uh, be careful with your cell phone and be sure that uh, it's turned on vibrate because you don't want it to go off and be embarrassed. And uh, You can have it on vibrate and then if you have to answer it, you can just quietly get up and go out. And if you need to use the restrooms, you go all the way to the back and uh, then take a sharp right and the Good morning. Before we get started, there is an error in the bulletin. Our first song, Lift High the Cross, is not 673, but 473. 473.
Would you turn to page 491, 491 in the Book of Common Prayer. I am the resurrection and I am the life, says the Lord. Whoever has faith in me shall have life even though he die. And everyone who has life and has committed himself to me in faith shall not die forever. As for me, I know that my Redeemer lives. And at the last he will stand upon the earth, and after my awaking he will raise me up, and in my body I shall see God. I myself shall see, and my eyes behold him who is my friend and not a stranger. For none of us has life in himself, and none becomes his own master when he dies. For if we have life, we're alive in the Lord. If we die, we die in the Lord. And so then, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's possession. Happy from now on are those who die in the Lord. So it is as the Spirit, for they shall rest from their labors. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, who by the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light. Grant that your servant Richard, being raised with him, may know the strength of his presence and rejoice in his eternal glory, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. And now we can read together from Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where is my help to come? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved, and he who watches over you will not fall asleep. Behold, he who keeps watch over Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord himself watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand, so that the sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. It is he who shall keep you safe. The Lord shall watch over your going out and your coming in. From this time forth, forevermore. A reading from John, sorry, okay. 
A reading from John chapter 3. If you know that he is righteous, you may be sure that everyone who does right has been born of him. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. My faith looks up to thee, thou Lamb of Calvary, Saviour divine. Now hear me while I pray, take all my guilt away, Day, be holy thine. May thy rich grace impart strength to my fainting heart, my zeal inspired as thou hast died for me. of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, according to St. John. Jesus said to his disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come again, and I'll take you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Dick was a, a little bit of this. And a little bit of that. He was, he was hard to peg. He was a little bit country. And he was a little bit rock and roll. Rock and roll, a little bit of Nashville, a little bit of Motown in his soul. Don't know if it's good or bad, but I know he loved it so. He was a little bit country. 
He was a little bit rock and roll. Thank you, Barbara. We, we tried to get Donnie and Marie, but they were not available. But I believe that's the way many of you have seen Dick. Uh, if you saw him on Sunday morning, you'd see a quiet, reserved man. Uh, and you would think, oh, what he likes is only the wonderful praise music. No, he also liked Johnny Cash and Ferlin Husky and, and, and some of that group. He loved country music, but he also loved rock and roll. And if you didn't believe it, you should have seen him and Barbara some years ago, it's been now, when uh, they were out on the floor doing uh, whatever it was. Was it bebop? Is that what was popular then? Uh, it was some of the oldies. But he, he, was, he, was, he was quite a personality. But he could be solemn when he needed to be solemn. And if you didn't believe that, you need to ask one of the girls. When he married Barbara, he took three teenagers and brought one in. So he had a house of four teenagers. Now, if you didn't believe he could be strict, <laughs> you were way wrong. He was a very strict father, except he was a funny guy at the same time. If you can be strict and funny, you've got to do it with a bullhorn. And more, more on that later. But, uh, but he was that kind of a person that was very difficult to peg because he could be different people in different situations, so it seemed. But it's not really true. Because there was one constant in his life, and that's the constant that really mattered. And I knew that pretty well, because not only did I minister to him in the church, but many times I ministered to him at home. And so I knew the depth of his spirituality, if you want to call it that. I want to call it Jesus. And he was at home with his heavenly Father. But where it really mattered, he was not a little bit of this, he was not a little bit of that, he was all Jesus. Because when Barbara had to ask him that question that determined whether he would try to hang on in the desperate state he was in, or whether he was ready to welcome the arms of Jesus, He was ready to go, and he let you know that. He told you that. That's the constant in our lives, and, and, and I wonder if that's not the beauty of being alive. Because all through life, we're a little bit of this, and we're, we're a little bit of that, and that's good. That makes for a total personality. But there's no time to be undecided when it's time for you to say goodbye. That's when your faith needs to be strong. That's when you need to be totally Jesus. That's when you need to know that you're not dying at all. You're simply going to meet the Father. And what a wonderful thing it is to be so versatile in life and to be so committed in death. Amen. Barbara has uh, a few words to share with you. My key words are words from my children. Uh, Barbara, you need to use the microphone that's behind you, okay. please. And okay. uh, if Okay, <laughs> this is a, a tribute to Dick from his daughter, Wendy. <clears throat> Wendy was his biological daughter, and she says, I miss you, Dad. You have always been there for me, from a tiny, whiny baby 
to the adult I am today. I loved playing catch with you in our backyard. And again, I remember how my two children loved it too. <clears throat> when I was a teenager, Dad and Mom Barb were very strict and made us four kids obey their rules. One night, my friend Seal and I were walking home to her house for a sleepover night, and you and Mom drove up behind us to see if we were smoking. <laughs> a big no-no. I'll never forget the loud bullhorn you kept in the car. And if Anne Marie and I were two minutes late, you would shout out over the loudspeaker, Anne Marie and Wendy, time to get home. <laughs> Damn curfew. I also remember the Friday night suppers at the Jockey Inn. We kids would get cheeseburgers and french fries with sodas as you began your work shift as a bartender while mom stayed and kept you company. Your customers were probably better behaved than us four kids. Oh, and how about those weekend car wash times in the backyard with the Cadillac or the Impala? I bet no one else in Rutherford had cars with spotless door hinges or under the hoods and around the engine or trunk. And I'm pretty sure I was the one, get me a cold one, runner, or the beer opener so I could have the first sip. We went to Ocean City, New Jersey each August in the cleanest caddy inside and out. That car got spruced up by the single bar of ivory soap. How all our seashell clothes, towels, toys, and games fit inside that car, only you know. So, Dad, no goodbyes. Just remember eyes. I love you, and we'll see you on the other side. That was from Wendy. My daughter, Anne Marie, is the oldest of our four children, and she sent me this note. Richard, Dick Gingrich, was not my birth father, but certainly stepped into the role of my dad in my, early in my life. Growing up, I thought I had the meanest parents. Always had to be in when the street lights came on, having to eat every meal as a family, not allowing us to stretch the telephone cord to the bathroom for privacy, <laughs> and on and on and on. But as an adult, although a few twists and turns, I became who I am because of loving parents. I could spend days telling you stories of my time with dad. We had so many fun times filled with laughter and love. I was very fortunate to spend two weeks every spring here in Sun City Center for over 18 years. There were cruises, beach trips, and so many day trips, and most of all memories I will hold in my heart forever. When I meet you again, I'll be sure to knock, knock, dad, knock, knock, dad, knock, knock, dad. He'll get it, bazinga. <laughs> <laughs> now, his, uh, Amory had two sons, and they wrote a little note. This is from Daryl. I would like to take this time to reflect and ex express what my grandfather, Pat, has meant to me. First, let me start by saying that because of my own actions and decisions, I have been removed from my family's lives for a number of years, but it doesn't make the loss of Pat hurt any less. I have peace, knowing that he has lived a long and fulfilling life. Some of my earliest and most fondest memories of Pat are for when he and Grandma lived on Locust Lane in Harrisburg. I remember him walking me through his garden, which at that time in my young mind looked like a full-blown farm, or we would walk to the neighbors to look at the deer. I also remember how sad I was when they moved to Florida. My pap was always a man I could look up to. His work ethics, spirituality, and love for his family were second to none. And even though I might not act like it most of the time, he truly showed me what it means to be a man. He will be loved, missed, and never forgotten. I love you, Pat. Daryl. And this is from the second son. Memories of my pap are amazing. He used to tell me jokes and always made me laugh. I recall this one time at my grandparents' house in Jacksonville when there was a water snake at the lake next to his house where I was fishing. Pap came and said, this is a venomous snake, and dealt with it. Years later, at our house in Linglestown, Pat played a, a prank on me with a ridiculous-looking fake snapping turtle. I freaked out. <laughs> Pap used to always take a whole day for him and I 
when I was visiting Florida to do what he knew I loved best, and that was fishing. He and Grandma always had lots of amazing things for us to do. Later on in my life, Pap would volunteer words of wisdom, and he never gave up on me, even when I had given up on myself. And as I look back, I wish I had more time, more phone calls, and wrote more letters. And that was from Eddie, my grandson. Our youngest daughter is Stephanie, and she lives in Michigan. How do you say goodbye when a person has been in your life for practically forever? How do you begin? Dick, Dad, words cannot express how much I love you. When you came into my life, I thought I had all the answers at the ripe age of 11. <laughs> I wasn't in need of your advice or your opinions, but despite my protests, you gave them to me anyway. <laughs> As life went on, we had our ups and downs. There were moments when we would butt heads, and again, because I knew everything I needed to know in life. I thought it was cool to sit at the step in the back door smoking a cigarette until you caught me. Being grounded was the worst punishment. As the years went by, you taught me the meaning of life, why to give 100% in everything I do and never give up. Because of you, I am the person I am today. I attribute my Navy experience to you because without your guidance, I would still be going in circles. And now that you've gone to your final rest, I am so sad, but happy that you are at peace. Thank you for taking such great care of our family. You were the best dad anyone could ever ask for, and the best and most loving husband for mom, and a great and faithful friend to everyone. I wish we could have spent more time together. I would just love to sit and listen to your stories about your life. Just sit and listen to you. And our son Dave wrote a little note. Everyone knew <clears throat> that knew Dick knew him as mild-mannered. He had a loving heart always putting others before himself. All the years I knew Dick, I only ever heard him say one four-letter word, only once, and that word was damn. A very self-controlled man. I say man in the highest regard. I loved him, and years ago, I told him wholeheartedly. Now, Dick was my blessing, my husband. He was a blessing from God for me and our four children. He was patient, kind, did not envy or boast, was not proud. Dick was not rude or self-seeking. It took a lot to make him angry, and he did not keep a record of wrongs. He did not delight in evil, but rejoiced with the truth. Dick always protected, trusted, hoped, and persevered. Yes, Dick lived, as we know, from 1 Corinthians 13. I will miss him, but he'll be forever in my heart. I will strive to be the woman he loved. Not a day pa <coughs> passed when he did not say, I love my Barbie. <laughs> and I found this <clears throat> just a few days ago. I was supposed to spend the rest of my life with you, and then I realized you spent the rest of your life with me. I smile because I know you love me till the day you went away, and I will keep on loving me, and you will keep on loving me till the day we are together again. I know Dick is with our Lord and is looking down on us. And I thank you all for being here. I know Dick is so happy that you're here, and I am too. God bless you all. Ninety-six. You may stand. In assurance of eternal life given at baptism, let us proclaim our faith and say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. 
On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Below found on page 497. I'm having a brain freeze. <laughs> I'm sorry. For our brother Dick, let us pray to our Lord Jesus Christ who said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. Lord, you consoled Martha and Mary in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn for Dick and dry the tears of those who weep. Hear us. You weep at the grave of Lazarus, your friend. Comfort us in our sorrow. Hear us, Lord. You raise the dead to life. Give us, our brother Dick, eternal life. Hear us, Lord. You promised paradise to the thief who repented. Bring our brother Dick to the Lord joys of heaven. Hear us, Lord. Our brother Dick was washed in baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Give him fellowship with all your saints. Hear us, Lord. He was nourished with your body and blood. Grant him a place at the table with your heavenly kingdom. Hear us, Lord. Comfort us in our sorrows at the death of our brother. Let us let our faith be consolation and eternal life our hope. Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to you our brother, Dick, who was reborn by water in the Holy Spirit in holy baptism. Grant that his death may recall to us the victory over death and be an occasion for us to renew our trust in your Father's love. Give us, we pray, the faith to follow where you have led the way and where you live and reign with the Father and Holy Spirit to the ages of ages. Amen. Let us greet one another in the name of the Lord. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. A couple of announcements, uh, just a reminder that there will be three services tomorrow, the Lord's Day. You may be seated. Uh, there will be uh, three services here uh, and uh, at Aston Gardens. We have a six o'clock service, and uh, we'll be having all of those services tomorrow and uh, inviting you, if you are here and you are visiting with us, uh, to come back and worship with us uh, tomorrow. A word about communion. I mentioned at the beginning of our service that all baptized Christians are welcome. It doesn't matter if you're Baptist or Methodist or Presbyterian or whatever. You're all welcome. You're family. But uh, I just would submit this to you. When you come, you will be able to receive the bread, and that's tantamount to receiving in both the bread and the wine. But if you wish to receive from the common cup, and we're back doing that now, you can receive here. There will be someone who will intent for you if you wish to have the uh, wafer intincted. But now, here's what you need to do. You need to put one hand over the other like this, so that the wafer goes right here in the middle of the hand. There's a reason for that. 
people sometimes wish to do it this way. But now if you, you can see what's going to happen if one person turns loose before the other, it's going to go on the carpet. Now, I'll pick it up and I, and I will consume it. That's okay. But I'd rather it wouldn't. You see? And if, you, if you'll do it like this, it won't. Because you will have it here. And uh, then when you, when you go either side, the person who's in Tinkton will take it, place it on your tongue. And, of course, you will consume it and you will use the common cup here if you wish to do it that way. Just a little thing to help me out, if you would. Just make a little cup of your hand and come. But the, most of all, I just want you to know you're all welcome to receive communion today in the church. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now. Was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear, the hour I first believed the Lord has promised good to me his word my hope secures he will my shield and portion be as long as life endures through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already come. Tis grace that brought me safe thus far. Grace will lead me home when we've been there ten thousand years, bright shining as the sun. We've no last days. God's praise than when we'd first begun. The Lord be with you. Lord be Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you. Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who rose victorious from the dead and comforts us with the blessed hope of everlasting life. For to your faithful people, O Lord, life is changed not ended. And when our mortal body lies in death, there's prepared for us a dwelling place, eternal in the heavens. Therefore, we praise you. 
joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all of the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we'd fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he'd given thanks to you, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is dying. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling His death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in Him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all of your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All of this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by Him and with Him and in Him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, world without end. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God.
Just as I am, though tossed about with many a conflict, many a doubt, my deeds and fears with thee. Just as I am, a wretched life, sight rich as healing of the mind, yea, all I need in thee. Just as I am, thou wilt receive, wilt welcome pardon, glance, relieve, because thy promise I Just as I am, thy love unknown has broken every barrier down. Now to be thine, yea, thine alone, O Lamb of God. Just as I am of thy great love, the bread length and depth and depth and height to prove
page 498. Almighty God, we thank you that in your great love you fed us with the spiritual food and drink of the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, and have given us a foretaste of your heavenly banquet. Grant that this sacrament may be to us a comfort in affliction and a pledge of our inheritance in that kingdom where there is no death, neither sorrow nor crying, but the fullness of joy with all your saints. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant with your saints, where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sighing but life everlasting. You only are immortal, the creator and maker of mankind, and we are mortal, formed of the earth, and to earth shall we return. For so did you ordain when you created me, saying, You are dust, and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust. And yet even at the grave we make our song, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant Richard. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. Now may the light of Christ go with you into all of the dark places where rescue is needed. May the courage of Christ give you the words to say when it is right and good to defend the right and good. May the strength of Christ uphold you and defend you. And may the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.
Hallelujah. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.